back to my channel so today's class is going to be a sewing tutorial so we will be learning how to sew our cow neck sleep dress now remember in our previous class we learned how to create patterns for this dress so today we will be placing our patterns and our fabric and then we'll be cutting them out now I'd already traced out my patterns. If you have been following my sewing tutorials, you guys know that I always like to trace my patterns out and then add my seam allowance. So I've already done that and I've only got three pattern pieces. So we have the center back piece and I've added my seam allowance, 1.5 cm seam allowance all around except for the center back because it's going to be cut on fold. And then for the center front, I've done the same thing as well. And for the center front, there's also no, no seam allowance there because it's going to be cut on fold. And then this is the facing for the center back, which is also going to be cut on bias and on fold. Okay. And I'm going to be using um, a satin fabric for this dress. So you can use satin fabric, you can use crepe as well. And I'm going to be using about 3 meters of fabric for this dress. Now it's a simple dress, you wonder why we are using 3 meters of fabric. Well, it's because we're going to cut it on bias. And when, whenever you cut on bias, uh, it tends to waste a bit of fabric. So having said that, I hope everyone watching this tutorial here have already subscribed to my channel. Please, if you have not already done so, please hit the subscribe button now and turn on your post notification so that when I upload new videos, you will always be notified when I upload new videos. And I always upload videos, uh, new videos on Saturdays. So turn on post notifications so you get notified. And like I always say, I like to read your comments, to hear your feedback, to know what you think about my video tutorials and give me a thumbs up as well if you enjoy these tutorials. Like, share, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So now let's go ahead and fold our fabrics and then cut out our patterns. So first you lay your fabric flat like this on the table and then you are going to throw it on the bias form just like this so we are going to throw it on the bias that's like um, angle 45 so you throw your fabric like this but you see what i'm doing okay yeah but you wonder why we have to cut this on the bias can't we just cut it on the straight grain and just move ahead and that's where we will even manage our fabrics more well yes you can actually cut this dress on the straight grain but then Trust me on this, it's usually better to cut the style on the bias. The finished look is more beautiful when you cut it on the bias as against when you just place it and cut it on the straight grain. Okay, so this edge here, you're going to place it on the folded part of your fabric just like this. So you see why when you cut on the bias, it wastes a bit of um, fabric. So all of this now is just going to waste. Okay, so align it, align it very well. And then you put your weights on them. Now, before you take off your pattern piece, be sure to give it a notch here. So you see, I already have a notch here where your facing is. This is very important, so please don't forget it. And then you're going to go ahead and fold your fabric and do the same thing for the back side. So your center back facing is going to be cut on fold on the bias as well. So I ended up using about two meters and half. So it really depends on the length you're making and on your size. So just get about three meters to be on the safe side. 
Now for the straps, I'm also going to cut the straps on bias and the width is going to be about 4 cm. Yeah, so this is 4 cm and then the length is going to be about 50 cm. So you're going to try yours out depending on how low your back is that will determine how long your straps are going to be. So you are going to have two pieces of straps just like this. Okay, so once you finish cutting, you're going to go overlock all your raw edges of your center front and your center back so that you can have a very nice finishing. And then we're going to go stitch these straps. So you're just going to go fold it like this. Your straps can be tinier than this, it depends on you. Just fold it like this and then we're going to stitch from one end all the way down to the other end. And then flip it, use our loop turner to turn it inside out so that it will be nice and neat so to stitch the straps you just fold it nicely together like this on the wrong side of the fabric and then you're going to stitch from one end all the way down to the other end you're going to trim off the seam allowance Then you're going to use your loop toner to turn it or if you have a safety pin or something like that you can also use it as well but this comes very handy in turning straps like this okay Now you're going to take it to the ironing board and iron it flat. You're going to do exactly the same thing for the other side. So once you're done with your straps, you're going to have something like this. Then you're going to take your front piece. Okay, your front piece is going to look something like this. And now you're going to place one edge of your strap. You place it directly on the edge like this is the right side of my front piece just place it on it like that and then use your facing to turn it inside like this and then you're going to go stitch now let me use a pin to hold it first in place okay so now you're going to go stitch like this all the way down to all the way down to the end like this and then you're going to also place the second one exactly like so and then you're going to go stitch Okay, so now you're going to flip it to see how it looks. Yeah, it's looking really nice. Now you're going to give it little snips here at the back. Just give it a little snip and then we're going to top stitch on it so that it can relax very well. Okay, so you're going to top stitch on the facing so you move your seam allowance towards the facing and then you top stitch I'm going to top stitch from the front here so that I can see it very well so now you take it to the ironing board and then you iron it very flat. You do exactly the same thing for the other side. So when you finish attaching your straps to your front piece, you're going to have something like this. And the inside is going to look just like this. Nice, right? So 
and this is how your cow neck is going to look like nice and neat so the next thing we are going to do now is we're going to attach this strap to our back piece so let me flip it this way so that it will be easy for us to attach so take note of how this is done this is a little bit tricky so this is the wrong side of my fabric and this is my back piece so I'm just going to place the right side of my back piece on it like this now something I something I did to my back piece was because my fabric because I cut on the bias so my fabric stretches a lot and depending on the fabric type you are using this fabric dances a lot so it stretches out so to prevent it from stretching out at the back here I just added fusible to it so that it will be a bit sturdy so you can do that as well and then I also did that for the back facing okay and you're going to place your you're going to mark the the exact uh, point where you want your um where you want to attach your belt so please give it a little mark so you are going to attach your belt uh, your strap now be very careful the way you place it i want it to be cross at the back like this you can also decide to just add it like this just put it like this it depends on you but i just want to cross it just like this now make sure you don't twist it so I arrange it very nicely just like this okay so once you've done that you are going to take it in like that you see what I'm doing and then you place it against the part where you want it where you want to attach it now you use your pins to hold it in place like that and then you do exactly the same thing you see how I'm turning my belt or my strap I keep calling it belt straps right okay and then you just use your pin to hold them together in place okay so you see what I did so now you're going to go stitch it and stitch on this side before we use the facing to turn it nicely so once you've attached it, you are going to now use your facing to turn it nicely. Now, lift this up just like this and then place your facing on the knit like this. Okay? So you are going to stitch from one end all the way down to the other end. And then you're going to top stitch it on the other side so that your facing will not be peeping out. Okay, so now you're just going to top stitch on your facing. So you're going to move the your seam allowance to the side of your facing and then you top stitch on it. Okay, so now you're going to take it to the ironing board and iron it very nicely. So the next thing for us to do would be for us to join the side seam, the front and the back side seam. So you place them together like this and use your pins to hold them together at the, the top here, this side seam here, where the facing meets. Just place them together like that. Use your pins to pin them all the way down to the end. So now you're going to take it to your sewing machine and then you're going to stitch from the face in here all the way down to the hemline and you're going to do exactly the same thing for the other side. So when you finish, you're going to go open press your seam allowance very nicely 
and then you fold in your facing inside like this so that it will relax very well yeah nice finishing okay so once you finish open pressing your seams you're going to have something like this nice and neat on both sides now you can go attach your your facing to your dress very nicely here so that it's not dancing up and down and then you do the same thing for this other side now the only thing left for us to do for this dress is to finish off the hem now I went ahead to overlock my hem to make it easier for me to just fold it in and finish it off but when I overlocked it I kind of really liked the way it looked so I'm going to keep it I just see how it's wavy a bit like this uh, the hem and it looks nice and neat um, I didn't do anything to it I think it's a function of um, um, the fabric and how it was cut because I didn't even change the settings of my overlocking machine so I'm not going to fold this in at all I'm just going to leave it exactly the way it is it looks nice right <laughs> okay so once you're done with this then you have actually finished your dress I hope you like this tutorial and you enjoyed it I'm really looking forward to seeing your make and if you struggle with creating your own patterns and you struggle with how to sew very neatly with clean finishing or you struggle with fitting then I suggest that you join my online pattern making and sewing classes because all of these are explained in details in for different garments for garments like skirts tops dresses jackets pants and jumpsuit and much more they are all explained in details there step by step and also you also get a tutors guidance so whenever you have questions or your challenges i will be on hand to walk you through step by step from the beginning of your project all the way down to the end if this appeals to you or if this is something you're looking for then I'll drop the link in the description box below so you click on it and then you go and sign up today. So thank you very much for being with me here on YouTube. I'll see you again in my next tutorial. Until then, do have a beautiful week ahead. Bye-bye.